looking back, um, every few, every about a decade, every, every five to 10 years, something really big happens uh, in computers. And if you start back where we were in 1977, I think it was, where Apple II came out, and we had some graphics, and it was really exciting, personal computers were launched, and then a decade later, in around the mid 80s, we actually got 2D graphics, and I think that was around the time that Imagination was founded, in 85 or so, and we, uh, we started getting 2D accelerated graphics and on a 2D monitor. And then a decade later, we got 3D accelerated graphics on a, on a uh, 2D monitor, and that was a pretty incredible time. If you look back, you had, uh, what was it, the IBM 8514, I think it was, which was one of the first uh, 2D accelerated cards, and then you had the 3D effects and Power VR uh, chips, which, which were some of the very first 3D accelerated cards, uh, probably bringing back some memories um, for some of you that have worked on those, those different chips. And, uh, and then we had, a, a decade later or so, we started getting the mobile uh, wave started kicking on, and that was really what I would view as the next big platform, right? You had PC, you had PC regular, 2D graphics, 3D graphics, then you had the mobile platform, which the whole thing shrunk down to a tiny little uh, form factor that you could put in your pocket. And in the beginning, it didn't have 3D graphics, it had 2D graphics, and then it had 3D graphics when, uh, I think it was, Power VR uh, showed up. And the first phone or two with 3D graphics wasn't super successful, um, but then iPhone, I think Steve Jobs held up in 2007, uh, another decade later after the first uh, 3D graphics on the PC, um, the iPhone with 3D graphics, and suddenly everybody's working on 3D graphics. Uh, and that was a really exciting time in around 2007. What was interesting is at, at the end of all of this, and I don't know the exact percentage, but I would say somewhere in the 95%, maybe even 99% of the time, that you're in front of a 2D monitor, you're actually working on a 2D experience. It's a, a 2D UI, it's, a, it's an experience that's powered by a 2D graphics accelerator. It's not 3D yet. Um, there's a lot of great technology and great experiences and content that comes from 3D games and visualization, but most of the time spent on these devices, whether it's a PC, a tablet, a phone, is still 2D. Um, and we have all this great technology, but we're still largely living in this 2D screen world. And a decade later, it's close to a decade later, uh, we suddenly had something really special happen. And that was a few years ago when um, a few people, Michael Abrash, John Carmack, some of the guys that early guys that brought us uh, 3D graphics, um, got in touch with Palmer Lucky and a few other folks and started working on this thing called virtual reality, which we've all wanted for a long time. Um, and they were able to come up with a version uh, before I got involved that worked well enough to really kick off this new space. And this is something that we see as we've spent the last 20, 30, 40 years in largely a 2D world, even simulating 3D, but largely all on a 2D surface, to finally get to the point where we're actually gonna have true 3D, and where we're gonna embark on a new generation of graphics that is actually true 3D, where 2D becomes the minority application. Uh, today, 2D is the majority, but in the future, with nothing more than, hopefully, a pair of sunglasses, into the prop, uh, we will have a true 3D rendered world. And this is something that is really hard to understand until you experience it. I don't know how many people have got a chance to try Oculus Developer Kit. Anybody out there? A few people. Okay, good. I want to apologize for the Oculus Developer Kit. It was an early version to show a glimpse of hope, but it is not what we're ultimately going to ship. When you see real virtual reality, it's something that I got to see for the first time about eight months ago uh, when I went up to Valve and, and met with Michael Abrash and uh, Oppmann and a few guys that were working on Valve VR R&D. They actually discovered and got to this threshold of true virtual reality, which is where you put on a headset. Uh, today it's a bulky ski goggle. In the future, hopefully, it's like glasses. Uh, <clears throat> you put it on and you actually feel like you're in a new place. You get the sense of presence. There's no motion sickness, you don't feel ill at all, you have no problems. You're in this new world, and you actually believe you're there. And if you look back at the history, the last 30, 40, 50, even 100 years, we've imagined these amazing places and we've on 2D surfaces, and we've tried to convince our brain 
that were there. We've tried to take this leap of faith, whether it's a book or it's a photograph or it's a movie or it's a video game or some kind of visualization. We've tried to say, imagine you were actually in this space and you've tried to be really immersive. And suddenly for the first time, when you put on this certain caliber, this certain quality of virtual reality that unfortunately nobody's seen yet besides a few people. Shree's gonna come down tomorrow and see it. Um, when you put it on, Zuckerberg got to see it. Uh, you actually believe you're there, and suddenly you're trying to convince your brain and remind your brain that you're not, that it's not real. And it's really a fundamental kind of phase change. We went from 2D surfaces where we were trying to take this leap of faith to be there to a 3D environment where we're reminding our brain that we're not actually there. And this sense of presence is going to change the way we understand computing. It really is something as big as, and Carmack and Abrash have all said this, it's as big as the computer being invented. It's literally going to be that big. We'll be able to put on a pair of glasses. We'll be able to have face-to-face -face communications. We'll be able to have environments. We may be able to have a conference like this, but we're all at home sitting in a chair or we're at the office, and yet we can go to a virtual conference and your brain will think you're there. To do that, it's gonna require another few decades of work. We're at the very beginning. We call this day zero, where it's a bulky set of ski goggles. And, you know, the uh, dream of sunglass VR where we all believe we're there is still a decade or two away. It's definitely going to take everybody in this room continuing to work, but this is the most exciting time. This is the time where we get to create this new world. It's probably going to end up to be rate, rate casting, ray tracing. It really is. It's something that when you get eye tracking and you can actually track the eye and you're looking around and you're trying to get foveated rendering where you're rendering what you're looking at in a lot more detail than the rest of the world, that's something that you can do with ray tracing. There's, and, and it's hard to do with polygons. There's all these different things that we're now stumbling upon that are rewriting and we can see are going to rewrite over the next few decades 3D graphics and technology. And this is definitely the most exciting time, I believe, and Carmack and Crash reunited uh, together believe that virtual reality is going to change the world in a very, very big way and there's gonna be a lot of people involved and imagination, I think is again, like you were at the beginning of PC graphics and the beginning of mobile graphics, uh, I really believe with your investment in ray tracing and the things that you're doing are gonna be at one of the companies at the beginning of virtual reality. So we're really excited to be here and uh, hopefully everybody gets a consumer unit. Don't, don't get the developer kit if you're not a developer, but buy the consumer unit and you will see what we're talking about. And it really is going to change the world and this is a time where we're gonna start and embark on a whole new generation of computers. So compute, we're very excited. Thank you for having me and good luck.